Hey everybody, it's Boo Ray Perry from Tampa, Florida. And before we get started, as always, be sure and check out my podcast. It's called Photobomb. It's available anywhere that podcasts are found. And if you look in the description below, you will find a link to my website. My website has links to every single piece of gear that I use. Not just the stuff I use on vacation with my Fuji X100F, but also all the stuff that I use uh, with my professional gear, with my Canon gear, when I'm shooting weddings and events and headshots and that sort of stuff. So anything you ever hear me talk about or not talk about on my channel, you can always find it on my website. Just click the link below. All right. So today we're going to talk about constant light uh, versus flash. And we're going to talk about it specifically as it pertains to my travel camera, the Fuji X100F. And it doesn't have to just uh, pertain to this camera. Uh, this pertains to every camera that you might uh, use. Well, every mirrorless camera that you might use because there are a couple of things that are different about using a mirrorless camera and constant light. We'll talk about that in just a few minutes. But the constant light in particular that we're going to talk about is my favorite little light. It's this one right here. And it's called the Loom Cube. And as you can see, my Loom Cube, I put a little bit of a quarter CTO gel on the front because the Loom Cube tends to be just a little bit blue for my taste. So I put a little gel on here to just warm it up just a little bit. I picked up this Loom Cube at the Imaging USA convention probably four years ago. And I absolutely love it. It's such a cool little device. It's rock solid. It's hard. It's metal. It's waterproof. Uh, it's super, super bright. And I'm a big fan of it. But... <laughs> I can't seem to find a good way to use it. You know, I mean, it's really a video light is really what it's what it's good for. And I, I do use it for video. I, I shoot video at Imaging USA every year. And this is the light that I use. And it's very small, very portable, very nice. But I really want to be able to use it for photography. You know, I, I first bought it. I started using it with my cell phone it's before I got my Fuji. And I thought, well, I can use this so that I can light up things with my cell phone and it worked but I don't know it wasn't real convenient and um, you have to use that proprietary app that comes with this if you want to kind of you know turn it itself on and off otherwise you have to turn it on yourself and adjust it and it became too much hassle so I so I said well I'll just stick it in a box and and maybe I'll come up with a reason to use it later and and what I came up with is what about with my Fuji right when I go and I travel and I use my Fuji I uh, will take a flash with me and take a remote with me and I will sometimes use that for off-camera light. Well, what if I just use this, right? This is smaller, easier, pull it out of your pocket, have somebody hold it for you, right? You can see it in real time. And I wanted to try this out uh, one more time and just come up with a definitive answer for myself as to whether or not I should really be trying to use this on location when I travel with my camera. And this video is the result of that experiment. So let's get started. So here's the first image that I shot at Disney World for Very Merry Christmas this year using the Fuji X100F and the Loom Cube. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you some images I shot this year at Disney World with the Loom Cube and then I'll show you some images I shot last year at Disney World with an off-camera flash. And then I'll compare and contrast the two a little bit and talk about the experience because this video isn't really just about what the results are you get. It's also about which one's easier to use and which one is easier to carry on vacation and which one is easier to hand to your wife and have her uh, hold for you and still get a good result. You know, these are the challenges that we face uh, when we are on vacation wanting to take pictures with our cameras and our family would rather that we just keep moving, Dad. So I'm going to talk a little bit about, about everything uh, having to do with the experience. So this is the first uh, picture that I took. So one of the advantages of using a mirrorless camera and constant lighting is that you can see your exposure in real time. And this is something we couldn't do with a DSLR, which is why we, we tended to not really see much benefit in full lighting all the time and constant lighting all the time because we couldn't see it. So we had to take a picture and then chimp it and then reset the light and then take a picture and chimp it. And now we don't have to do that because we can use the EVF. We can see in real time exactly what the picture is going to look like. Because unlike with a flash, with a constant light, um, any change that you make to the settings in the camera is going to affect your constant light. Now, this isn't the case with a flash. With a flash, you can change your shutter speed and it doesn't really affect your flash. So you can make a lot of changes in the camera without having to worry about your light. You can't do that when you're using constant light because a constant light is affected by everything in the camera. So what you have to do is you have to get someone to hold your light and then you have to set up your camera the way that you want it for your background. And then you have to have that person adjust that light to get your people to look okay. 
All right, so this is different than working with a flash. So that's what I did here. I set up my camera so that the background was where I wanted it to be. And then I told my wife, okay, turn that up and turn that down. And I don't know if she knew how to turn it up and turn it down the way I told her to. So I had to have her hand it to me, back to me. And then I turned it down a couple, I handed it to her. And then I found that also a lot of times it's easier instead of saying, turn it up and turn it down, just say back up or move forward because that has the same effect. And this was the picture that I came up with. And it was uh, pretty much the way it looked uh, in the camera when I was taking it. And it only took me a, a minute or two, not even a minute, I guess, to get the light where I wanted it. And now I could, I could take several shots of it and, and everything would be fine. So the constant light worked, uh, worked pretty good. You know, I was, I was pretty happy with it. Uh, then later we moved to a second location and I said, let's, let's do it again here. And we did. And then finally, at the end of the night, we were just about to leave. Uh, the, the big castle was behind us. And I said, let's take a picture in front of the castle. So I set the girls in front of the castle. I set the light on them. Uh, I took the picture and then I realized, well, the, I think it's a little too dark. Castle's a little too dark. So I had to reset my settings in my camera to bring up my background some more, which meant I was also going to be making the light brighter. So I had to turn the light down. And there was a couple of, you know, back and forths here where I was trying to get my wife to stand in the right spot with the light so that I would get the amount of light that I wanted. And uh, just more direction uh, onto her, onto my human light stand uh, than I normally have to give her when I'm just using the flash. And that's because the flash is ETTL, right? So as long as you're pointing it at the people and you're standing where I told you to stand, you don't have to do anything else if you're my light stand. The flash is going to communicate with the camera and do it all for me, right? Still, the pictures were good. Right, I, I was happy with these pictures. I'm on I'm on vacation. I've got yeah, the little tiny you know, Fuji and 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 just this little bitty cube in my pocket. And and here's what I'm able to produce. And and these are these are good, right? These are certainly better than if I had used the flash on the camera. So now let's go take a look at last year. Last year I took my flash and my remote. And then you can see if you're carrying these two versus carrying this. Right, you're 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 carrying more weight. You're carrying more space. It, it's it's considerable. It's considerable, which is why I really want this to work. However, you get the benefit of not having to fool around so much with the camera settings. I could just put my daughter in location and hand the flash to my wife and say, "Hold this flash," and take a picture. It's ETTL. Right? I just set the camera up so the background looks the way I want it to look, and then the flash does the rest. Uh, in fact, uh, with the picture of my daughter, I don't even think, uh, I think I might have been holding the flash with my other hand. And then a few minutes later, when I wanted to take a picture of me and my wife, I was able to hand the camera to my daughters and have one take the picture while the other one held the light. And it came out first try. No problem. Now, if I had tried that with the Loom Cube, it would have been different because you would have had to have been able to look through the camera, see the exposure in real time, and then decide if it was right. And if it wasn't, you would have to fix it. You know, or I would have to go over there and, and do the whole thing on my wife and set up the way I wanted and then go back into position. But with a flash, I don't have to do that. And the penalty that you pay for this is that you've got to carry, you know, this stuff around with you, which is really uh, as big as the camera is. It's like carrying two cameras now. But is it worth the benefit? I don't know. You know, I, I, I guess it depends on what you want to do, on how often you want to use it. Like if I was going into Disney World and I was just going to take, you know, maybe one lit picture the whole time I was there. If I said, I just want to take one picture of somebody with off camera lighting. Well, then maybe this is the way to go because, I mean, one picture, right? You just want something small for that one picture. But if you think you're going to take more than one picture... Or if you think that maybe you want to bounce some flash, and if you don't know how to bounce flash, I have a great video about that, and uh, the link will be right above me. You can see that uh, video. Um, if you think you might want to do anything more, then I think it might be worth it to carry a bigger flash. You know, carry this and carry the remote because the instances where you're actually using this, the picture is going to be much quicker, less frustrating and less frustrating for the people who are with you, which when you're on vacation can be pretty important, right? Um, so there you have it. This might be something I would throw in my pocket if I really don't think I'm going to need any light, but just in case I want to have something available to me. Well then, yeah, I would just throw this in my pocket and hopefully just forget it's there, but it's there if I need it. But if I go in knowing 
then I'm definitely going to be taking an off-camera light picture while I'm here. I might take two. I might be looking for an opportunity to take some off-camera lighting pictures while I'm here. Then I think it might be worth it to carry the flash and the remote. And of course, this whole point becomes kind of moot if you're carrying a bag. I carry a bag with me sometimes. I wasn't doing it this year at Disney World. But when I'm on vacation a lot of times, I'll carry a little bag with me that has my photography equipment in it, carries a water bottle and stuff. And there's a link also, if you'll look up, there's a link to my video that describes everything that I carry in my bag. If you're carrying your bag, well, then you might as well carry the flash, right? Because it's, really, it's not going to make that much of a difference if you're carrying a bag. But if you're not carrying a bag, that's when it becomes a decision. There's one other variable that can make the decision very easy, and that is this. Are you going to be taking pictures where you need a flash in bright sunlight? Because if you need a flash in bright sunlight to overpower the sun, a constant light is just not going to do the job for you. It's either not going to be bright enough, or if it is bright enough, it's going to be so bright that your subjects are going to be squinting. This was shot with my little flash off camera, and I handed my camera and my flash to friends of mine who aren't photographers to take it. So what's the bottom line? Well, the bottom line is that this is a very cool light, but it's not going to replace ETTL flash. And um, it's also a little bit blue, so you might want to put a little bit of a gel on it to warm it up just a little bit. Uh, that being said, it does have its uses, but I think it's a little limited when it comes to still photography. That if you've got access to a flash that you can use a trigger, I think you're going to get better results in almost every single situation than you will with this. Uh, you'll get faster results, certainly. Uh, faster when you're taking the picture, but not necessarily faster when you're getting ready to take the picture because in this case, you have to take your thumb grip off your camera and then put the uh, remote on your camera and turn it on. Then you have to take your flash and turn that on. And even that is a little bit of something. When I was working with, uh, with my camera at Disney World with the uh, Loon Cube, I just pulled out my camera, turned on the cube and handed it to somebody. That's much faster. But at that point is when suddenly it becomes slow compared to using the flash because now you have to be able to dial in this light the way you want it. Whereas with a flash, it takes a little bit longer to get it on your camera and get everything ready. But once it's there, it's pop, pop, and it's going to be perfect almost every time. So there you go. I hope that if you've been, you know, considering maybe the idea of carrying a constant light around or even a, a loom cube for still photography, especially with the Fuji X100F, that I've answered a few questions for you and maybe uh, helped you make a decision. Uh, the truth is I'm going to continue to have both of these lights, and I'm sure that about once a year I will take this with me just because I'm, I'm looking for a reason to use it because I think it's a really cool light. And I, I feel like there's just some use for this light that I haven't really I haven't really figured out yet. I really want it to be really useful to me because I just like it. I like the build quality and I like everything about it. Uh, so I hope that I've helped you uh, figure out a little bit about what works best for you. The bottom line is, I think that if you can get away with carrying a flash and a remote and it's ETTL, that that's absolutely gonna give you the best results and the fastest results. Uh, you're overusing a constant light on location. Thanks for watching.